Hi, my name is Romero Trevino from Ag Excel. We build custom fertilizer application systems for many types of environments, many types of different fertilizers. And in this, in this video, we designed a system for QLF agronomy. Now, QLF agronomy is a division of quality liquid feeds, and they develop soil nutrition solutions. These liquid carbon-based fertilizers, and they're also known, uh, known as LCBF, have a high concentration of sugar that's derived from QLF cane molasses. Now there's three different formulations that we'll be testing and showing you how we're able to achieve exact rates when applying these types of fertilizers. The first one will be the LCBF 1014 -1. Now this, this formulation is usually a standalone starter that's used at about five gallons to the acre. The second solution will be the LCBS Boost which you could use one gallon plus four gallons of APP 1034-0 to get your five gallons an acre. And usually this is at a 20-80% mixture. And then the third mix would be the LCBF TerraFed. And again, this would be used at five gallons to the acre. So the system that we designed for this type of fertilizer would be our GX6 solution. Our GX6 solution utilizes microtubing. And the big difference that you're going to see between microtubing and orifices is that the orifice, if you notice, has a very small hole to measure the liquid and create your back pressure, of course. But the theory behind the microtubing is that the small hole that's on this orifice, it's like in the microtubing, is twice the size. So you're going to still allow to get the back pressure to, to get an accurate rate but you'll notice that the hole size, the inside diameter, is much larger than the orifice, which allows for the flow of these heavy or viscous liquids to flow a lot more easier. And what we have done, if you notice here on the table, we have 11 different sizes that we've designed, and each tube has to be eight foot in length, and you notice they all have different sizes there. So what we've done with QLF, is that we have designed a specific tube size to allow their highly viscous liquid, the molasses-based fertilizer, to flow easy and you won't run into these problems of plug-in. There's a few other things that we've done with this as well. With this, it, the molasses-based fertilizer is about 11.2 pounds, so it's very viscous, very heavy, especially in cold mornings when you're trying to get started. Uh, with an orifice-based solution, it makes it very difficult. And there, the other items that we've done as well is that we've increased the size of the mesh of the filter to a 30 mesh. Most systems we run approximately an 80 mesh filter, but in this setup we're running a 30 mesh set, uh, filter. Also, I wanted to show you, it's a dual nozzle system, and what we typically do is that we'll run two, two microtubings, and in this case for the QLF setup, for the molasses-based fertilizer, we'll want to run a purple and an orange, that way in the morning you can get, um, if you, liquid's a little heavier, we open up both nozzle bodies. But what I wanted to kind of show here is that right now we have in the system uh, a black orifice. And I wanted to display what the difference was when you're running an orifice versus a microtube for this type of viscosity. So if I turn on my system here, I'm gonna slow down my rate here. So I'm at four gallons an acre, if you'll notice there. I'm running at about 20 PSI. I'm gonna bump it up to five gallons an acre. And you'll notice my pressure starts to go up. So what I'm gonna do, that's, that's with my orange orifice running. I'm running at about 28 PSI at five gallons an acre. So I'm gonna open up my black orifice. Now you'll watch the pressure just drop just a little because I have both of them open. But notice what happens, I'm using the same size microtubing that the orifice would run and watch what happens to my pressure here. See my pressure starting to go up. I haven't even finished closing these up. So with the black orifice, you'll see how my pressure is going up dramatically, causing a lot of, a lot of back pressure on it, not, not allowing me to lock in on my rate. So once again, I'm gonna open up the microtubing. And again, I wanted to show here the difference between the same orifice-like size compared to the microtubing. So once I open up 
that side. I'm going to close down the orifice side. And then on the orifice side, now that that's shut, I no longer have liquid coming out of the orifice. I only have it coming out of the microtubing and look where my pressure is back down to. So because of the length of the tube, the eight foot length, it allows us to create the back pressure on the system on each individual row. But it, because it's a larger size of, an, of a hole based off of the, the uh, orifice, you're going to get a much better flow on there and it'll still measure it exactly. Now I'm back to my orange tubing that we would use with this carbon based fertilizer and look at how my rate just locked right in on five gallons to the acre. Uh, steady, running, running really steady. My pressure is running really well. And so it allows me to basically to uh, apply this type of fertilizer at a much more accurate rate. So that's with the orifice uh, on one end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this out and put the purple back in. That way you can see the differences in how we set these up uh, for the system itself. In this video, we're going to be testing LCBF TerraFed. And this formulation is typically used at about five gallons to the acre. And so what we've done here is we've basically uh, used our AgXL GX6 dual manifold system. And we use the dual manifold system for this high viscosity fertilizer, molasses based fertilizer, because it allows the flow to achieve a better rate and a smoother rate. And you can see here we have the two different tubes on each size. And as we mentioned earlier, we do have 11 different sizes on that. And so the way this works is if you notice, we're getting approximately five gallons to the acre right now on our setup. Our pressure is running right at about uh, 12 PSI, 12 to 14 PSI. And I currently have both tubes running. They're both open at this time. And what this would simulate is, for example, first thing in the morning, you're getting ready to go out and plant your liquid's a lot heavier, a lot thicker, it's colder. And so what you do is you'd open up both valves so that you can keep your pressure in the, in the proper pressure range. We typically like to see anywhere between 10 to 20 PSI. 25 is not a bad range, but trying to keep it within, you know, 20 to 30 is a very good range because it helps everything, all the electronics to run a lot cooler. And that way you're not overheating any of your electronic components. So right now we're running, as you said, about 14 PSI. It's cold in the morning. We have both of these open. Now, as you go planting throughout the day, the viscosity of the liquid's gonna thin out a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit warmer. So it's gonna be a little less heavy, heavier. And so what happens is that your pressure will start to drop. So once your pressure starts to drop, the only reason that's critical is because then your check valves won't open. These are four pound check valves that we wanna make sure are opened up. That's why we have the 10 PSI pressure. And so let's say, for example, throughout the day, the pressure drops low. What you would do is you'd come out and close the smaller tube, which is the purple one. And as I, as I close these valves here, I'm closing down the tube. You'll see my pressure on the gauge start to raise. We were at 14. And you see the pressure right there start to go up because we basically shut down one of the tubes. But then again, the viscosity was dropping a little bit. It was a little bit lighter. And so your pressure is going to drop and we want to make sure we get those open so that midday you'll close these down and leave the top one open and you'll get the steady flow. And there's times throughout the day where you may not have to do that. It might stay cool, but you know, you'll watch the pressure to ensure that that won't happen. Uh, let's say the pressure drops too much. So what you do, I'm going to open up these purple ones again and you'll see my pressure change again. It drops down, but I'm going to close the orange tubes this time. And you'll see the pressure climb again. Now this time you notice it went a little higher. So there'll be times throughout the day and that's because the, the purple tube is a, a lot smaller. And so the pressure will go a little bit higher, but there'll be days when the viscosity did drop. And so you'll, it'll allow you that range to achieve the proper uh, pressure and also you'll notice that our rate stayed the same so our five gallons an acre didn't change at any time now if you look at that five gallons an acre i'm going to open up the valve again on the orange and you'll see that rate kind of jump a little bit but that's because it's trying to lock in but immediately you'll see that rate just lock right in because i opened both up and the pressure did drop back to 12, to uh, 14. 
So the microtubing, as we discussed uh, in the previous videos, when you compare it to the orifices, we mentioned that the orifice is a lot smaller hole on there and the like of its microtubing is twice the size. So you can see how that heavy viscous liquid would flow a lot better in this microtubing. And so we, there's times when you can get away with just using one tube if you're gonna keep the same rate, uh, one tube can work. It's nice to have dual tubes because it gives you that option to immediately change it out and uh, adjust your, your pressure so that you're not heating things up and you're getting good flow. The problem with higher pressure, as we mentioned earlier, is that it does create a lot of heat in the system and it, it'll create heat in the electronics and they'll start to break down. And also the higher pressure doesn't allow the liquid to flow. The harder you push, the more resistance you get and so you will affect the rate on that. So that's why we want to keep that pressure in that operating range of 10 to 20, 10 to 25 PSI. Uh, now the way we calculate which tube needs to be utilized is that we do have an app that we designed here at Ag Excel and this app that you can download at the App Store allows you to basically put in the, the rate so you're going to be doing five gallons to the acre, the width of your implement, how many total rows, and it'll tell you which tubes uh, to use for that type of application. In this case it's, a, it's a recommending the purple and the orange which is what we have in this scenario. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have 11 different sizes of microtubing that allows you to achieve the rates that you're wanting to do at the proper uh, system pressure. So at times, uh, you may it may have to vary only because it may be a little bit colder in some areas, a little more viscous in the other. So this app gets you really, really close. And that's the nice thing about being able to have the dual uh, body manifold is that you can run two and you can change them instantly uh, without having to take it apart and put the different uh, microtubing in. So that's how we do it uh, with the microtubing. It's a great solution that we uh, utilize with QLF fertilizer. Any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call.